Hello out there in cyber accounting land. Professor Ebert here to help you master it quick. In this session, we'll talk about adjusting journal entries. By the time we're through, not only will you know how to make an adjusting journal entry, you'll know the reason why we make them and what they do on the company's financial statements. Are you ready to go to work? Let's go. The principle that drives why we have to do adjusting journal entries is called the matching principle. This is out of generally accepted accounting principles and simply stated it says, in order to determine the net income correctly, we have to make sure we have all of the revenue earned during a period of time, whether it's been received in cash or not, matched up with all the expenses that were used during that period while we were generating the revenue. If we have everything in, we have a good net income number. There are four types of adjusting journal entries that we'll look at in our session. And the first one is known as a prepaid type adjustment. Now, when you hear prepaid, you think of prepaid insurance, and that's absolutely right. One of the situations that requires this adjustment is when we buy insurance for our company vehicles. Most of the time, those policies are six months at a time, and of course, we're paying for it in advance. When we buy the insurance, we send it into the prepaid insurance account with a journal entry like so. At the time we bought that insurance, that was the right thing to do. But come the end of the period, have we used up some of the insurance coverage? And the answer is sure, we have. Now make it simple for me. Say we paid $600 for six months of insurance. One month's worth is 100 bucks. What we would want to do at the end of the period, and say the period is July. At July 31st, we would want to make an adjusting journal entry to take the $100 of insurance coverage we used up and turn it into insurance expense. That's what the debit side is doing over here. The credit side of the entry is reducing the prepaid insurance asset down by one month's worth of insurance. So when we're done, we have the expense of what we used in July and the prepaid insurance account is reduced by the amount that we used up. The same kind of thing happens when a company buys supplies. At the time they purchased the supplies, they sent them into the supplies account because they hadn't used them yet, which was the correct treatment at the time. Come the end of the period, they've used some of them up. Now how we find out how much was used is we look at what the supplies balance was at the beginning of the period, and then we go count the supplies we still have at the end, and the difference between those two amounts is how much we used. So the portion that we used up, just like we did on the insurance, we're going to make that into an expense, in this case supplies expense, with our adjustment here for the end of the period. And the credit side of the entry reduces the supplies account down. It's the same sort of thing as with the insurance. The part we used up is an expense, and then the part we used up reduces the asset down. The other situation that will call for a prepaid adjustment is when we use our property, plant, and equipment assets. Every time we use our equipment, our trucks, our furniture, our building if we own it, does it wear out a little bit? It does. The other thing that happens is it becomes a little bit more obsolete. Now, how the accounting system picks this up is with a prepaid adjustment that will take the part that we estimate has been used up during the period of time. And in another session, we will look very closely at how to calculate depreciation. For now, it's the same idea as using up the insurance or the supplies. The part that we used up, we're going to make into depreciation expense with the debit side of our adjustment. The credit side is not going to hit the expense account directly like it did with prepaid or supplies. Instead, we're going to use this guy here, accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. The purpose of it is to let us see what the book value is at a given time of our truck or our building in case we sell it. 
We need to know what the book value was so that we can see if there was a gain or a loss on the sale. So we'll discuss that also during the session on um, depreciation expense and asset accounting. So three types of situations will require a prepaid adjustment, using up insurance, using up supplies, and depreciation expense. The second type of adjusting entry is called an unearned adjustment. And here's the situation where this will come up. It comes up in the instance where a customer has given us money before we've provided the service to them. Now, some kinds of businesses, this would never, ever happen. If we had a barbershop, nobody's going to give us money for hairstyling in advance. But what if we were a sports team? If a fan buys season tickets, that's what they're doing. They're giving us money before they've received games to watch. If somebody subscribes to a magazine, same kind of thing. They're giving the magazine money before they've received the issues of the magazine. So the unearned adjustment comes up in those kinds of situations. When the money first comes in, the customer gives us a thousand bucks and we haven't done the work yet, let's say. So on the beginning of the period, we increase cash, of course, with the debit side of the entry. Now remember, this guy's a liability account. Unearned revenue is increased by a credit entry, like liability accounts are, because we have the obligation to finish that work for the customer or else give him the money back. Now, if we did some of the work during the period, what happens is we are reducing the liability account, which is what the debit side of this adjustment is doing, and then the credit side increases the revenue account up. So, in other words, we have fulfilled some of that obligation by working it off. A third type of adjusting entry occurs when a company has done some work, but it hasn't been billed for yet. Now again, this will vary depending on the type of company that we're working with. If I had an auto repair shop, on the last working day of the month, when we close up for the day, we have as much auto repair service revenue as we're going to have for the period. But suppose we're a plumbing shop and we offer 24-hour emergency service. On the last day of the month, let's say we get a call 9 o'clock at night from an apartment building where the curb trap drain is not operating and nobody in the apartment building can use their drains. The manager of that building is very interested in getting that drain clear, so he calls us up. We have an opportunity to earn extra money with an emergency service call, so we go out there and we clear the drain. All right, we finish at 11.30 at night. 11.30 at night, the only thing we're thinking about is going home and getting cleaned up, and then we'll deal with the bill the next day. But was it still May up until midnight of that day? It was. Shouldn't that revenue be counted for May? That's what this unrecorded uh, revenue adjustment will do for us. What we do is we debit accounts receivable for the value of the work we did. The credit side increases the service revenue account. So that situation will happen in certain types of companies and not in others. It could happen with a professional services firm, accounting firm. Uh, during tax season, uh, we sometimes work until midnight. And if they're billable hours, we would do the same sort of a thing. Same goes for, an, for a uh, legal firm. If the attorneys are working on a case and they have billable hours, they would do it too. But Auto repair shop, it just wouldn't come up. Barber shop, it just wouldn't happen. Dental office, same thing. The fourth kind of adjusting journal entry concerns a situation where an expense has been incurred and it hasn't been recorded yet. Now you might think, well, aren't we doing that when we have the regular transactions? We are, except in a case of uh, about four situations where this happens on a regular basis, and this will happen with any kind of business. Take the situation of a utility bill, gas bill, electric bill, what have you. 
If you think about it, it's pretty hard for PICO to give you your electric bill for May on May 31st. They have to read the meter, they have to figure out how much electricity we used, they have to make us a bill, and then send it in the mail. So we may not see our May electric bill until maybe June 5th or 6th. But did we use the electricity during May? We did. So that's the reason why we have to do the unrecorded expense type of an adjustment. It's easy to do. We see how much electricity we used up until May 31st, and let's say it's $300 in this case. I debit utilities expense for 300 bucks, brings in the expense of what we used up. The other side of the entry is creating an obligation, which should be shown at May 31st. Do we owe Pico Energy 300 bucks for the electricity we used? We do. So the credit to accounts payable will take care of that for us and put it in. The same kind of a thing can happen with salary expense. Let's say that our company pays on Friday for the previous Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday. Now, for simplicity's sake, we'll say that our company is not open on Saturday and Sunday. We're only dealing with those five days. Most of the time, when we pay on Friday, we're paying for days in the same month. But let's say that the end of this period here, May, let's say that it fell in the middle of that week. How do we handle a situation of getting the May salary expense into May and then the June into June? I'll show you. First, we look and see how much it is to pay everybody in the company for one day. So let's say in our company, it's $3,000 a day to pay the entire company. So what we would want to do is count how many May days there are in that period that ends June 2nd. All right, so if June 2nd is Friday, June the 1st was Thursday, May 31st was Wednesday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are in May, three days, three grand a piece, $9,000. So we make this type of an unrecorded adjustment. We debit salary expense for $9,000. The other side goes to the liability account salaries payable. Okay, this gets the expense into May, like we want, so matching is being followed, and also shows the liability that exists for what we owe the employees. Now, the liability is going to get discharged pretty quick, the following Friday when we pay payday, here's how we would handle it. We're going to get rid of the liability that we put on for May, because we're paying it off now June 2nd, and then we're also going to grab the expense of June 1st and June 2nd, in other words, Thursday and Friday of that week, would be two more days, three grand a piece would be $6,000. Now, we're blacktopping over the taxes and stuff, which is okay for what we're doing here. In another session, We'll talk about how you handle the stuff that's being withheld in a payroll. But right now, we'll just credit cash for the entire thing. So when we pay our payroll on Friday, we just do it as per usual. The debit side will sort out what's supposed to go where so that everything ends up in the correct period of time. Another situation that can call for an unrecorded expense adjustment can be when we've borrowed money. Some kinds of loans have a monthly payment, usually a longer loan. If we borrowed money to buy a truck, our loan's probably 36, 48, 60 months long and we get a monthly bill. In that case, the regular transactions are going to grab every time we pay, they're going to grab the interest expense that belongs in that period and we're good. But what if we have the type of a loan where we have to pay everything back at the end? That happens sometimes on shorter maturities, maybe six months, a year, three months. And that type of loan is called a balloon loan. If the company has one of those loans out, it can cause there to be an interest expense adjustment. I'll show you. Let's say our company borrowed $10,000 with a 6% interest rate. Now, regardless of how long the loan is out, remember, that is an annual rate of interest. So the first step is to see how much a year's worth of interest is. So in this case, $600. Next, we're adjusting for a month, so we divide by 12, 50 bucks a month. This entry will put in 
the interest that should be there for the month ended 531 and also put in the liability, which is also should be there at 531 for one month's worth of interest. If we do this entry each month that the loan is out, it'll be very easy to see how much we're supposed to pay back. When the maturity comes, we have to pay the 10,000 back plus all of the interest payable that we have racked up. So as I said, some kinds of loans where there's a monthly payment, you wouldn't have to do this, but there's other types of loans where we would. The other situation that uh, will call for an unrecorded expense adjustment can happen with property taxes. That's the fourth. I mentioned that there were four that almost every business would run into. And uh, property taxes can happen if we own our building. The property tax bill is going to come in one time a year, but is the property tax expense going on month by month as we go along? It is. So what we would do in a case like that to put on the expense adjustment that we would need. Make it simple for me, say the property tax bill is $2,400 for a year. So a month's worth is $200. So here's what we would do. May 31st, property tax expense. 200 bucks. Credit side, property tax payable. Uh, so this is doing the same thing that the other unrecorded expense adjustments were doing. Putting in the expense that we need for the period, that's the debit side doing that, and then the credit side is introducing a liability that should be shown for the end of the period. So to review a little bit, each of the four adjustments changed the company's financial statements. We'll use the accounting equation just to run down what the changes were. All right, prepaid adjustment. Remember what that was. It was us using up supplies and insurance and things like that. That brought in an expense. Now, bringing in the expense, if you recall your transaction session, if you bring in an expense, you make net income go down. If net income goes down, so does retain earnings. So that's why we have a drop over there. The other side of that entry was reducing an asset. So both sides of the accounting equation dropped. Second adjustment for unearned revenue. When we had the unearned revenue adjustment, we were debiting the unearned revenue liability account, which is this piece here, was reducing it down. The other side was bringing revenue in that we had earned. So when you bring revenue in, you're going to make net income go up and also make retain earnings go up, which is why we have that change there. Now notice this. This guy happened entirely on the right-hand side of the accounting equation. Is it still in balance? Sure. There was an offsetting change over there, and we didn't need anybody on the asset side, so we're still good. Unrecorded revenue brought in an AR. That's this guy here. And then the revenue effect of, or the income effect, I should say, of increase in revenue is the same, a plus to the equity section. And then last but not least, the unrecorded expense. So the interest on the loan and all that stuff and the salary we owe the employees brought in an expense, reduces the retained earnings because of that, because the net income went down. And then the other side put in a liability that wasn't there before, which was the increase to some sort of a payable account. Okay, this is Professor Ebit checking out. See you next time.